Welcome to this edition of The Hill with April Ryan. Between elections and the looming budget deadline, we have a lot to unpack, so let's get started. We are approaching the deadline for a budget agreement. The 45-day continuing resolution that keeps the government open ends November 17th. House Speaker Michael Johnson has a plan that will keep the government open through January, but Democrats have not signed on. If the government shutdown happens, the impact will be felt for government services, and the lack of paychecks for some contractors and others who work directly with or for the government. I talked with financial guru Angel Rich, who explains the equation to stay financially afloat if hard times hit. It begins with the basics. You need to have savings. So I would recommend everybody start penny pension right now. You might not need to go out to Mastro's or the Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> Um, you might want to uh, bust out a sandwich and just start saving your money because you don't know if hard times are ahead. And as I mentioned, we had Christmas coming up. So you want to be able to buy one or two items for your kids. So don't start spending all your money now. And then weeks later, um, you're yelling because the government has shut down and you don't have money coming in. So I highly encourage everybody to do that. Rich says in uncertain financial times, people tend to use their credit cards. She reminds right now interest rates are at their highest. She says, be careful. Now on to this week's elections where Democrats were victorious. Philadelphia has elected its first black woman as its 100th mayor, Sherelle Parker. Dr. Youssef Salam won his bid for a Harlem, New York City Council seat. And Kentucky Governor Andy Bashir beat Republican, black Republican Daniel Cameron to keep the highest seat in that state. The election results were days after a new poll from the New York Times and Siena College that shows that at this point, Donald Trump is ahead of President Biden in four swing states, Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, and Nevada. That poll comes days after Trump received an endorsement from former HUD Secretary Ben Carson. Carson said, Donald Trump believes in our freedom of speech, freedom of religion, and the right to keep and bear arms. But there is still appearing to be an enthusiasm gap for the front runners to square off in the presidential election next year. Voters are not excited about a Biden-Trump rematch. Sirius XM host Joe Madison interviewed Vice President Kamala Harris this week, and the issue of age came up. Here's what the vice president had to say about the president and his age. Actions speak louder than words. Yeah. And when you look at what the president and I, what Joe Biden has been able to accomplish, you know, many presidents over many years talked about, for example, what they were going to do to to build it back up America's infrastructure. It's under Joe Biden's leadership that we're getting that done. Let's not get distracted. Let's look at whether we have a president who has actually produced and, and followed through on his commitments and especially long, on longstanding issues that needed to be addressed. When it comes to age, I might remind you that when Republican Ronald Reagan was president, he reportedly fell asleep in a number of meetings. And at this point, we haven't heard of Joe Biden falling asleep in meetings as of yet. Have you heard? Rashida Tlaib has been censured in the House. She is the only elected American Palestinian Congresswoman on the Hill. The three-term Congresswoman was censured for her comments about the Israel-Hamas war. The punishment is one step below expulsion from the House. Tlaib defended her comments, saying she will not be silenced. I can't believe I have to say this, but pa Palestinian people are not disposable. We are human beings just like anyone else, my city, my grandmother, like all Palestinians, just wants to live her life with freedom and human dignity we all deserve. Speaking up to save lives, Mr. Chair, no matter faith, no matter ethnicity, should not be controversial in this chamber. The cries of the Palestinian and, ch Palestinian and Israeli children sound no different to me. Why, what, I don't understand is why the cries of Palestinians sound different to you all. Well, that's it for this edition of The Griot's The Hill with April Ryan. See you next time here where we focus on the news for us and about us. Take care. Peace.